Welcome to Everyday Linux User and welcome to a month on Manjaro Linux. Before we start, if you get to the end of this video and decide you like this sort of thing, then there are similar videos about Ubuntu, Mint, Debian, Endeavor, Kashi, Fedora, OpenSUSE and MX Linux. So Manjaro, the Arch based distro that Arch users love to hate, but is it for good reason? In the past, Manjaro developers have made a few mistakes, such as letting their SSL certificates lapse on more than one occasion. There are also issues when using Manjaro with the Arch user repositories. But I am not here to judge Manjaro as an Arch based distro. I am here to judge the suitability of Manjaro for new users and the average Joe who wants to use Linux on their home PC but doesn't necessarily care too much about the technical side of things. In the past few months I have reviewed Endeavor and more recently Cache OS which are more in tune with the Arch philosophy. With Cache I hit a few snags and it wasn't ideal but it wasn't terrible either. It's probably not for the everyday Linux user but I can see why it is popular with the more technical minded. Endeavor worked very well and is probably the best choice for most Arch users who don't want to use Arch itself. Is it for the everyday Linux user? Again probably not straight away. Once you have been using Linux for a little while then it is definitely worth checking out if you like the Arch philosophy of continuous updates and improvements and being cutting edge. Endeavor provides a straightforward way to install Arch and has a few extra tools on top. So where does Manjaro fit in? Well, Manjaro is kind of like the Arch version of Linux Mint, but it breaks the rules a bit to make sure that Manjaro is as stable as can be. Arch is very cutting edge. All the packages are about as new as they can be, but that can come at a cost. If a package updates and there are issues with it, then as a user, you are going to have those problems with your system. It is a bit like traveling in a car at 100 miles an hour. You get where you are going very quickly, as long as there isn't a stationary vehicle in the outside lane, in which case you plow into the back of it and you are in a fair bit of trouble. Manjaro gets around this by holding back the updates for a few weeks to see if there are a problem. It is a bit like waiting to see if the car in front makes a jump before trying the jump yourself, or indeed, in the previous analogy, it is like going 80 miles an hour instead of 100. When you look at it like this, then you can see why Manjaro are doing what they are doing. They are trying to keep their users safe which would be grand if they didn't let their SSL certificates lapse every so often. I will come on to why this causes problems a bit later on though. When it comes to installing Manjaro then it is as easy as installing an operating system gets. I installed the KDE version. You don't get a huge amount installed by default but you get a web browser and a choice of office suite and a few other tools as well. There's just enough to make it useful without making it bloated. Hardware wise it works very well, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, printing etc were all very easy to set up. As well as using KDE which is a good desktop environment for most users, I also tried Sway. And if you are interested in trying out a different workflow then check out the videos released in the past week where I show you around and also show you how to customise Sway. If you are a techie then you will end up loving tiling window managers. Manjaro comes with a package installer and most of the packages in the main repositories are great but if you want to use OBS or Caden Live for instance then you are better off installing the flat packs as they work better with the Wayland. If you only ever use X11 then you can use the default packages. The choice of Office Suites during installation is interesting. It offers a choice between only Office and LibreOffice. The form of the two actually requires you to sign up after a short period. Personally I would stick with LibreOffice. So let's talk about the AUR thing. The main thing Arch users like about Arch is the ability to use the AUR which provides access to a huge number of packages. You can enable the AUR with the Manjaro but I would be very wary about doing this. The AUR uses the latest packages and as mentioned earlier Manjaro holds back the latest packages. If one of the AUR packages you install is a dependency of a held back Manjaro package then this can cause all sorts of problems. I did enable the AUR during the month on, but only to install the Microsoft TrueType fonts such as Arial, Verdana, etc. For everything else, I stuck with the normal packages in the Manjaro repos and flat packs. When it comes to installing packages, you can use the built in graphical package manager or the command line. In the command line, you can use Pac Man in the same way you would with Arch, and you can also install Yay if you want to use the AUR, but the preferred option in Manjaro is to use Parmac. 
Parmark is a one-stop shop for installing packages from the AUR. As mentioned before, I would be wary of doing this. Did I encounter any major issues with Manjaro? No, I didn't. As mentioned previously, I had to use the flat pack versions of OBS and Caden Lithe within a Wayland session, but that is about it. When using Sway, I also had to add in a policy kit into the settings and a network manager, but most people who stick with KDE or other common desktop environments will not hit this issue. So, do I recommend Manjaro to the everyday Linux user? And this is a tricky one to answer. Everything works fine and is easy to install and easy to use, but for some reason a lot of the Linux community do not seem to like it, and not just Arch users. If you install Manjaro because you want to be an Arch user, then I don't think you really are an Arch user if you use Manjaro, but you will learn how to use common Arch tools such as Pacman and Yay. If you will install Manjaro because you want an up-to-date but not completely bleeding edge operating system that is easier to install and use, then Manjaro fits the bill. I'm not going to lie, I have always quite liked Manjaro, and I don't think there's any real harm in using it. There's a reason it is quite popular, and has been in the top 10 of DistroWatch for so long. It does work, and it works well. So take this as a balanced view. Do I recommend it? Yes. Can I see why others don't? Yes. And that is the end of the video. Next month I will be spending a month on Nabara after my recent poll where 71% of people said they wanted me to do that one next. Hit the subscribe button and click the like button and I will see you next time on Everyday Linux User.